In this problem, you are asked to convert 4 ounces to some amount of milliliters. I'm going to solve this problem using dimensional analysis and also using a proportion. If you would like to jump ahead to the dimensional analysis, you're welcome to click right on the dimensional analysis here. That should take you to that point. Or if you'd like to see it solved with a proportion, click right here on the word proportion and that would take you to when I solved it using that. What I'm going to do first is list some things that we need to know and then I'm going to start with a quick graphic representation of, of how we can solve this problem. One thing that we absolutely need, no matter which particular procedure we're using, is the conversion factor from ounces to milliliters. This is on your formulas and, and measurements and conversions to memorize. If you have lost that worksheet, I'm sure it's still available in the learning resources or you can contact one of the math constructors here at PA College and we would be able to email that to you. If you look on that, what you're going to find is you're going to see ounces a few different times. One is in terms of volume and the other is in terms of weight. How do I know which one I'm using? Am I using ounces to a certain weight or ounces to a certain volume? That is easily answered by looking at what we are converting it to. We are asked to solve 4 ounces, find its equivalent equivalence in milliliters. Liters is a measure of volume. This is a measure of volume we are looking for. I immediately know, and we do see that here, that this could be written fluid ounces. This could be FLOZ, but because we are asked in milliliters, we don't even need that FL. It's just OZ for ounces. So now on to the explanation. I know, regardless of which procedure I use or which method I use, dimensional analysis or proportion, I know because of that formula sheet and that conversion sheet that one ounce is going to be equivalent to 30 mLs. So even before I get into any of these methods here, I just want to quickly kind of visualize this. If I had a container, and this container had and again, what we're looking for is four ounces. So if I could split this container, it's volume, so I know it's volume. But if I could split this container here, here's one, two, three, four. Each one of these represents one fluid ounce. So I have a total of four fluid ounces. Every one of these is worth 30 milliliters. So here's 30, here's 30, here's 30, and here's 30. I know if I were to add all these up, I would get 120. Therefore, immediately I know that 4 ounces is equivalent to 120 milliliters. I know that's very quick. We didn't do any sort of multiplying or use a proportion, but it's just visualizing what we know about this. Each ounce contains or is equivalent to 30 milliliters. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to solve this problem using dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis uses conversion factors, so I guess I'm going to just delete this part here. We still need this one ounce equivalent to 30 mLs. We still need that. Remember with dimensional analysis, you always start with what you know, what you are given. We are given four ounces to convert, so I'm going to start with my four ounces over one. We're not working with a rate, so we don't have any units here in the denominator. With dimensional analysis, we are using these conversion factors. We're going to be multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by a conversion factor. If I wanted to cancel out ounces, I need to be dividing by ounces. And if I want to go from and cancel out ounces, and I want to go into milliliters, then milliliters needs to go in the numerator. I recommend that students first write in the units that they are canceling out, and then the units they are going into. Some students will rush into this and write the numbers and the units all in one here. But first just realize I want to cancel out ounces and I want to go into milliliters. Once I have these units listed, I can now write them in. I know one ounce is equivalent to 30 mLs. Since we are using dimensional analysis, I am multiplying by 30 over 1. Therefore, I will multiply the numerators. 4 times 30, this is 120 the unit left in the numerator is mLs. In the denominator, I'll have 1 times 1, and there is no unit left. So I have 1 and no unit. This is equivalent to, you know, we're taking 120 and dividing it by 1, 120 mLs. So, just to recap, we started with what we are converting, 4 ounces. We realized that that's going to be written over 1. 
Dimensional analysis uses multiplication factors here to cancel out units. So we're canceling out the ounces going into mLs. I realize that that's all I need. It's just a one-step problem. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. The last thing that we're going to do is solve this problem using a proportion. If you want to go back and look at the dimensional analysis again, you're welcome to click on dimensional analysis at any time. Solving this problem with a proportion, you still need this one ounce equivalent to 30 mLs. This is a conversion factor. Regardless of what method we use, it's necessary. What this tells us, if we want to use a proportion, is that regardless of however many ounces we have, if we were to reduce any sort of ratio, it needs to reduce so that it's equivalent to one ounce over 30 mLs. So this conversion factor can be written as a ratio of one ounce over 30 mLs. Now, it doesn't matter however ounce, how many ounces we start with or however many milliliters we start with. When you divide another, two, another set of numbers over here, this needs to be equivalent to 1 over 30. Now, we know the ounces is going to have to be in the numerator, and we know the milliliters are going to have to be in the denominator. That's because that's how proportions, that's how we solve proportions. We need the units to line up. So we're going to have the units in the numerator, or excuse me, the units of ounces in the numerator and milliliters in the denominator. So I know whatever numbers I put over here, I can't actually choose. I can't just put 3 and 12 or 17 and 20. I know I'm looking for one of these things. I'm looking for a certain amount of milliliters. I don't know this. And I want to know how many milliliters is contained in 4 ounces. Because we know we are dealing with equal ratios here, I know whatever number that goes under mLs, this ratio needs to be equivalent to 1 over 30, 1 ounce over 30 mLs. That's what a proportion tells us. To solve a proportion, I'm going to replace this question mark with an x. To solve a proportion, we cross multiply. We do not multiply the numerators, we do not multiply the denominators, similar that we this confusion that is usually set in from dimensional analysis. We are multiplying one ounce times x, so one times x, 30 times four. We get x equal to 120. If you leave your answer as x equal to 120, technically that's not correct. Keep in mind, we want to go back up here our answer would be 120 mLs. Just to recap, a proportion, what we do with the proportion is we use the conversion factor, we set that up as a ratio, we are going to have an equivalent ratio where we know either the number of ounces or the number of mLs. In this case we knew the number of ounces, so we wrote 4 ounces because we wrote 4 up top because that's where the unit of ounces was. I didn't know the number of ml, so I put an x there, and I cross-multiply to solve for x.